You are tuned into the Dr. Tina Show with Dr. Tina Moore. For more, visit drtina.com. On this week's episode of the Dr. Tina Show, it's a quick and dirty and it's a very controversial topic. So let's jump in without any hesitation whatsoever because I actually believe this and I'm going to share with you something that stirred quite a controversy the past few weeks. I was on the awesome Cody Sanchez's podcast. I flew to Austin. I got to be on her show. She's such a rad chick, you guys. You got to check out her pod. I hope to get her on mine. But she asked me a question based on something that I had said in the past, which was that our disease processes beyond the ones that are known to be contagious are actually contagious. Things like high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, what are considered non-communicable diseases are potentially indeed communicable, meaning contagious, meaning you can catch them from proximity to somebody else who has them. And she made a reel about it. She shared it. She's got, you know, millions of followers. And boy, oh boy, was there some heat back on me. And I want to say this first, correlation is not causation, meaning just because two things are correlated does not necessarily mean one caused the other, right? But that said, I'm going to share with you some data. And I think that what's been emerging is more recent. I really started hearing about this in 2020. I had heard about it in the past. You know, there was some data that I saw back in 2017 actually surrounding the topic of obesity and how even if you have a friend who becomes obese on the internet, you have an increased risk of becoming obese yourself just by interacting with them, even on the internet. And I was like, that's crazy. So I don't know how true that is. And I don't know if that's been disproven. But in 2020, there was an article that came out. And at the same time, I was talking to some microbiome expert friends at a conference. And they shared with me a study where one person in a family took an antibiotic and everybody else's microbiome, gut microbiome in the family shifted, even though they didn't take the antibiotic, just the one person did. And I was like, whoa, that's crazy. Our microbiomes are contagious. It's not just fungal infections and skin things that we can share, but truly our microbiomes are contagious to the point of our metabolic health being contagious. And I know that is tough for some people to hear and they want to get really angry about it, but we have mice studies to show this. They took mice and they put an obese mouse in with lean mice and the lean mice became obese. And conversely, there are there's some data points to support that when an obese person, and I think even in the mice, are surrounded by or sort of... Um, more than not of their friend's cohort or their surroundings are lean, they may tend towards more being becoming lean. So this is not made up. This is happening. I'll find the mice study and I will put it in the show notes and you can look at it. It's crazy. There's pictures. So anyway, in 2020, this was written up in Science Magazine and the question was, are non-communicable diseases communicable? Numerous non-communicable diseases could have a transmissible microbial component. The abstract reads, the past century has seen a profound decrease in mortality across the world, accompanied by a marked shift from communicable diseases such as infectious microbes to non-communicable diseases. They call these NCDs, such as cardiovascular diseases, cancer, and respiratory diseases. NCDs, defined as diseases that are not transmissible directly from one person to another, account for more than 70% of all deaths globally. That's 41 million people. The definition of NCD rules out any microbial involvement and instead focuses on genetic, environmental, and lifestyle factors. Data increasingly show that the microbiota is dysbiotic, altered in individuals with various NCDs. In animal models of NCDs, transplantation of dysbiotic microbiota into healthy animals result in disease. So they did microbial transplants, probably fecal transplants. And microbiota composition is shaped by close contact with others. Therefore, we propose that some NCDs could have a microbial component and, if so, might be communicable via the microbiota. Some would say that it is just proximity and it has nothing to do with microbiota sharing. 
right? Um, they say that it's shared behaviors and norms. So if you're living with someone who's obese and they're overeating, you might snack with them. You might overeat with them. Household or community environments, maybe it's shared toxicity. Maybe it's shared beliefs and norms around food. You know, in certain families, you go over and they overfeed you. They're like, you're too skinny, eat more, you know? So who knows? Socioeconomic factors, obviously a huge component here. Not going to negate that. But all that said, the microbiota theory is proving itself very potent. And so we're going to talk a little bit about it more. So the implications for public health is that understanding the social environmental factors contributing to NCDs, non-communicable diseases, highlights the importance of community-based interventions. Programs that promote healthy behaviors across social networks and improving environmental conditions can be effective in reducing the prevalence of these diseases. However, when we bring in this 2020 study and some of the other data that has gone around, it, it gets interesting, right? Um, this article summarizes showing that non-communicable diseases like obesity, heart disease, and type 2 diabetes might, in fact, have a communicable element. I mean, it makes sense, right? They are microbiota. They're, they're bugs. We're sharing our bugs. I'll give you an example. I had a patient. He had He was full of intestinal worms, and he was dealing with obesity and some heart disease. He was very Caucasian, very, very pale, bl blue-eyed, light-skinned man. His wife was from Jamaica, and she was black. And she had some extra weight on her, but very healthy. Her labs were great, uh, wasn't showing any metabolic disease, just a curvy lady. And usually when I treat one patient for worms, I tell them to bring their spouse in because we're going to treat both of them because we can't get rid of the worms in the one and the parasites in the one without treating the other because that is how much we share our bugs. Even if they're bugs that are fecal oral, uh, you know, it, 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 not that these people are in any way, shape, or form trying to expose themselves to their partner's fecal material, but it just happens. Like you flush the toilet and it aerosolizes out, or you share a bed and you shed. So being in proximity with people definitely can, especially if you're intimate, can definitely lead to sharing and shedding of certain things. All right. So Non-communicable diseases, including heart disease and diabetes, and even some of the inflammatory bowel diseases perhaps may be transmissible and spread among people in close contact, much like infectious diseases. This was said by Dr. Brett Finley, who conducted that study. Core points here, uh, social contagion of chronic illness. People in close contact, including spouses, family members, friends, and even coworkers are more likely to share the same conditions that are chronic conditions. It's not just due to genetics or shared behavior, but shared microbiomes, food, sleep, stress, and lifestyle patterns. So it's all of it, right? Again, correlation does not equal causation. Microbiome, the impact it has here, it is linked to conditions like obesity and diabetes, and that can be transferred between people in the same household. So pets and even roommates can exchange gut bacteria, potentially inducing long-term health issues or benefits, right? Like your dog's microbiota, you having a healthy dog, I firmly believe is going to improve your health. Environmental sharing, access or lack thereof of, of real food, movement, and clean air is often shared among people in the same household or community, of course. And so we've got environmental and socioeconomic factors here that we have to acknowledge. That would be blind and ignorant of me not to. But the environment you live in, even close quarters, you know, overcrowdedness inside some of these living places can be the grounds for chronic illness, both infectious and non-communicable. And then implications for policy, I think, you know, we only look at things as being shared if they are contagious, like aerosolized or, you know, viruses, et cetera. But I think that we really need to start looking at chronic lifestyle conditions as potentially communicable. So it's not just genetics. It's not just personal choices. It's not just a lot of things. It's also proximity. And it's the people you eat with and sleep with and have intimacy with and the people you're around. Um, mom's microbiota impacts baby's microbiota for sure, right? And it's not just because mama's feeding baby it, her milk. So then there's another article, The Hygiene Hypothesis, The COVID Pandemic and the Evolution of Human Health. And this was a really interesting study. 
Non-communicable diseases are influenced by microbial exposure. This article explores how the loss of microbial diversity in modern societies may increase susceptibilities to chronic diseases like obesity, type 2 diabetes, and autoimmune conditions. What does this mean? Our diversity is declining. Our microbial diversity is, is bottoming out. Some are saying uh, COVID itself and even the intervention led to bifido decline in the gut, which is terrible. It's a terrible, terrible thing to have happen. Dr. Sabine Hazen talks about this and she is a microbiome specialist. I'm, I want to get her on my show to talk about this because what she saw in folks was a severe decline in bifido bacteria, which is like the keystone gut microbe for optimal human health. And it just bottomed out. My other friends who are in microbiome testing world, they test gastrointestinal that they run the lab. They told me in 2022 that they saw a major decline in diversity of gut microbiome since 2020, since everybody got locked down because people quit interacting with each other. When we interact with each other, we share a microbiome. So it really matters who you hang out with. It really does. I hang out with healthy people, healthy, vital people, because I want their healthy, vital microbiome. When I met my husband, I kid you not, he's so vital and he's so healthy. And I was like, I want to lick him. And I don't mean that in a sexual way. <laughs> I just wanted to literally like, I want his microbiome, right? He's so healthy and vital. And then when you have a really healthy, vital microbiome and you're around people who are much more sick than you, you're sharing a healthy microbiome with them. The diseases that come in and through human beings' bodies change their virility. Viruses, for instance, I was trying to share this in 2020 and I just got hammered for it. We've known this with influenza studies prior to 2020. When a virus enters a body, the human body attenuates it, right? The body attenuates it. It calms it down. This is where we get the concept of herd immunity is that if it goes through enough humans, it will become kinder and gentler and become really not a big deal for the herd. Um, how true that is for each organism is is different, but it's a theory, you know, hypothesis, and that's what they like to lean on. That's what they were trying to go for in 2021. It didn't work. I knew it wouldn't work. But that said, the we know that in folks who are living with obesity and who are more inflamed, when a virus, influenza at least, we have data on, when a virus enters their body and is processed through their body, it actually can come out more virulent to their lean counterparts. So... I'm not saying this to stir up controversy. I will put the data or the study in the show notes. It's just how it is. And so what does this mean? I'm, I'm not trying to throw anyone under the bus, freak anyone out, don't up and move out of your house, but think about can you at least harness your metabolic health, your resiliency, and, and stoke it enough that your microbiome is resilient to anything that comes your way, and you in turn are actually sharing a really healthy microbiome with those around you, right? That's really what it comes down to. And we have lost diversity after lockdowns. And so that is going to lead to less diversity means more chronic disease. Modern society with its decreased microbial exposures have created the perfect conditions for the rise of non-communicable diseases was basically the conclusion of that study. So there's more to this. And I, again, correlation does not equal causation, but I really think as time goes on and this is studied more, we're going to see more and more of this coming to light that we are over sanitized. We are definitely sharing our microbia with each other. Who you surround yourself with matters, not just because of their behaviors and the way that they're eating and, and exercising and whatnot, but their microbiome is actually, it's communicable. So we are contagious to each other. And that makes me want to work harder to stay healthier, more resilient to anything that comes my way. So I can hang out with folks who are maybe not as vital. And also I can donate my healthy microbiome to those around me, right? That's why I hug everybody. I always hug. I'm a big hugger. Like, bring it in. I want to share the microbiome. I want to check out their vibe. That's how I figured it all out. So I hope that's interesting. I hope it doesn't piss everyone off, but very interesting concept. And because it came up in that podcast and then subsequently on my Instagram as a reel, I wanted to clarify so that people didn't think I was just being ignorant or judgy. This is backed by science. With that, I will bid you adieu. Thank you so much for watching The Dr. Tina Show. If you will rate, review, and subscribe, that would be hugely helpful. 
If you're on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that bell below. Let me know you're here. Leave me a comment. Even if you leave me a nasty comment, leave me a comment. I want to see what you guys think about this. And go ahead and email us, podcast at drtina.com. Don't email us with your rants, but email us if you have ideas for the pod of topics you want to hear me cover. Hopefully it's in the wheelhouse of, you know, metabolic health, muscle, metabolism, hormones, menopause, you know. That's my, that's my jam. So with that, I will bid you adieu. Thanks for listening to The Dr. Tina Show. This is a Wellness Loud production produced by Drake Peterson and mixed by Mike Fry. Theme song is by John the Guilt. You can watch the full video version of this podcast inside the Spotify app or on YouTube. As always, you can email the podcast at podcast at drtina.com. That's D-R-T-Y-N-A. And if you like this episode, please rate, review, and subscribe on your favorite podcast app. You can also find all of my offerings on my website at drtina.com. For more shows by my team, go to wellnessloud.com. See you next time and thanks for listening. This podcast is for general informational purposes only. It does not constitute the practices of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. I am a doctor, but I am not your doctor. No doctor-patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is intended not to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions.